We're here in the International Space Station Flight Control Room here at the Johnson Space Center, and it's my privilege today to have European Space Agency astronaut Luca Parmitano joining us. Thank you so much for making the time with us this morning. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. So it's a, an exciting weekend. Even the, the tempo here in the flight control room is a little up. Everybody's getting ready, turning their focus for the uh, departure and reentry of the ATV vehicle. Well, as a Capcom, I find that this room is always exciting. But of course, today there is a heightened sense of happening because of all the operations going on on the station. It's a, a been a hallmark program for the European Space Agency. Can you tell us some of the highlights for the ATV from your standpoint? Well, let's see. Uh, five absolutely flawless missions. Uh, it, I call the ATV the flagship of the International Space Station cargo fleet because it is the biggest, it's the one with the most cargo. And on, on the um, European western side of the station, it's the only one that is completely automated. And I, I like to re remind how it uh, launches from Kourou in uh, French Guinea. It travels for little millions of miles or kilometers and it docks with a precision of about one centimeter or half an inch, uh, completely automated. It's, uh, it's a fantastic demonstration of technology, European technology. There is a lot of, of Italy in, uh, in ATV and as an Italian astronaut, I'm almost obviously very proud of it. So uh, it's been a fantastic program and uh, it's been a little bit of sadness that I see it uh, coming to a conclusion. I, we can understand. Um, one thing that I found fascinating is we all tend to think of ATV as just a cargo craft, but really it's capable of a lot more, and this uh, ATV-5 especially has done uh, a few more extra special things. Can you talk us through a little bit more about those capabilities? Absolutely. First of all, the, um, the, com the pressurized volume of the ATV is really, is really big, is really nice, so basically it becomes an extra module once it docks on the space station. It, and it's nice to have uh, that storage area, to have that, uh, it, it's also very quiet, so it, it, it's a nice environment to be in. Uh, to start with. Also, because of its powerful engines and the way it docks to the aft part of the space station, it's been used uh, several times through its uh, five missions for um, PDEMS maneuvers. They are the um, to, uh, avoidance maneuver uh, in order to uh, change the orbit of the space station in case there is uh, any chance of a collision with one of those uh, space debris or other things coming in. Uh, so that is a fantastic um, way uh, to to employ it. Uh, also, it uh, because it it brings um, it brings cargo, but also uh, fuel, um, water, uh, all ki all kinds of different gases. It's uh, it's also a way to keep the station pressurized. It's a, it's a it's a good so it's a great source of of resources. And then it's also, uh, obviously, it's used to uh, dispose of trash, which is an incredibly, uh, incredibly big problem on the space station, get, getting rid of, of the trash. So the big volume of the, of the ATV really helps in that sense. Yeah, absolutely. That's probably something people don't think about so much is everything that we're bringing up. You know, there's only so much room in the space station, and managing all of that stowage and getting rid of unneeded items is a big priority and a, a big logistical issue, so this is key for that. Um, it is, and I'd like to remind that the ATV, that when, when we see it compared to the space station, we don't get a sense of the size, but for people on the ground, I'd like to remind them it's as big as a double-decker from London, one of those uh, big buses that, that are around, and that's how big the ATV is. It's really a, a big uh, spacecraft. So you touched on this a little bit earlier in the interview, but can you talk to us a little bit about what this program has meant for ESA and the European countries, and especially you were talking before our interview about coming from Italy and what that means because they've had a role with ATV? Well, certainly. Uh, first of all, um, ATV has been a, a very successful program, and it has um, given us an opportunity to cooperate with NASA and the other space agency and to, to be part of the International Space Station program. Uh, it has let us uh, develop um, engines, uh, navigation systems. Uh, again, I reminded earlier how precise the navigation system is, and this will help us in the future with other spacecraft. Um, the legacy of the ATV doesn't disappear with the, with the conclusion of the program because the evolution of the ATV will be um, the service module for Orion, the next gr uh, great cooperation between the European Space Agency, Europe, and the United States, and NASA. And so uh, what we have learned in these uh, this amazing uh, years of uh, using the spacecraft will be, will be really come uh, useful uh, when we develop uh, the, the new service module. 
That's um, a very good point. You know, as you said, this might be a little sad for some people who've supported ATV through all of these missions, but what a great testament to the capabilities that it's going to be part of Orion and, and continuing forward. Absolutely. And uh, um, again, th this is a little bit comparable to what happened with the shuttle programs. Um, the shuttle program, ATV, these are great programs. They helped us a lot during um, the years that we have employed them, but everything comes to an end and it, it, doesn't, it doesn't end there. It continues into the evolution of the program. Uh, and I, I think it's great that the evolution of both the shuttle program and, uh, um, and ATV comes together in a, in a common ground, which is the, the, Orion, uh, the Orion program for uh, to go beyond low Earth orbit, and I'm sure that the people at the different control centers are thinking about that right now as um, uh, ATV-5 uh, the orbits and, and comes to find his final resting place. Absolutely. Well, that's something the teams here know as well. And like you said, it just leads to bigger and better things for future space exploration. Uh, speaking of the control center, I'm assuming that you've been to the control center uh, for ATV, and what do you think that they're doing today? And, and you've spoken a little bit about how they might be feeling, but any other words you want to add? It's hard to say how they might be feeling. I remember how I felt when I let go of ATV for a year and a half ago. Uh, it, it was my privilege to be on board. I captured and let go of uh, ATV4, Albert Einstein, and it felt a little bit like letting go of, of a friend because it, it was with us the whole six months of my permanence. He brought, he brought our food, our clothes. So for us, it was... Uh, a, for me, it was a very special feeling. It, it was, um, you know, I always tend to say that it came, um, bring, it brought up not only uh, our our food, our clothes, our experiment, but also all the dreams of the people that that built the spacecraft, that put their work and their hours and all their passion into what they do. Um, a little bit of that will be certainly today uh, present in uh, the ATV Control Center in Toulouse. Uh, but right now, they're probably focusing on the myriad of operations that they need to do in order to deorbit the spacecraft correctly. Uh, even though it's an automatic vehicle, the man is always in the loop. They have to make sure that all, that all the programs are working correctly, that the data they're receiving are the ones that are expected, that the path that the spacecraft is taking is uh, according to the plan. And they will be sending command at time, from time to time, um, allowing the spacecraft computers to go on to the next step. Well, we will definitely be following along with all of those activities and, of course, uh, covering that uh, starting tomorrow on NASA TV. So congratulations to you and all of the European Space Agency team, and we'll be following along and looking forward to uh, things yet to come. Well, I'll, uh, I think that right now we need to congratulate the, the crew on orbit that, that did a great job uh, with the undocking, and certainly uh, the, the European engineers and uh, and throughout the space agency that uh, um, started this program and brought it to a successful conclusion. And um, it, thank you for having me here, and uh, let, me, let me express my also congratulations to the, to the teams in Europe.